Okay, so welcome to Uxbridge College Virtual Open Day for Engineering. We're going to put some links um, of information into the chat, including the full-time guide, how to apply, and the registration form in case you haven't already registered for, for this open day. If you have any questions, please also um, type them into the chat box and we'll aim to answer those at the end of the session. So I'm now going to hand over to my colleague Maruf and Rakesh, who will talk about engineering at Uxbridge, Uxbridge College. Okay. Thank you, Caroline. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the School of Engineering. We mainly do two streams of engineering in our school, mechanical engineering and electrical electronic engineering. And we have a range of courses we'll go through uh, in subsequent slides. So next slide, please. So what we have got here, uh, the, the first part refers to the level three courses. So what we have is BTEC level three national foundation diploma or extended diploma in engineering, which is electromechanical engineering. Uh, and then we have pathways of mechanical engineering uh, and also electrical electronic engineering. Uh, and then we have the BTEC level two course, uh, which is equivalent to GCSE. It's called first extended certificate in engineering. And if somebody with much lower grades, that person can go on to the level one program, which is diploma in engineering technologies with the awarding body EAL. And then if somebody's already got the level three qualification, we've got a range of higher education courses in level four HNC and level five HND uh, in general engineering, mechanical engineering and electrical electronic engineering. So next slide. And this list, the mainly the entry requirements. So the first row uh, is basically uh, after the level. So level three, then level two I have listed in the reverse order and level one, then HNC, which is higher education. So for level three, we need five GCSC grade C's or, or grade four to nine or above, especially math, science, English, and two of the design, technology, business, or ICT. If you don't have the other two, and if you have some other, it's not a problem because we know that not all schools offer these combinations. And if people have got the grade threes mainly, and maybe some four, but mainly fours, grade threes, or grade D in, in the old provision of GCSE, it's science, English, language, and two of the same following like ICT, design, uh, technology and, and business. So science, maths and English is, are important. Sorry, there was a phone call. Oh, sorry, can you go back to the slide, uh, Caroline? Okay, the level one, we need grade E's. So for example, people didn't do very well, unfortunately, for whatever reason, then grade E's. And for HNC, we need one A level, either in maths, physics or engineering, or a subsequent level three qualification. Uh, if you have got engineering qualification, extended diploma, for example, with MPP grade. Uh, other qualifications are welcome because we understand the people do get different qualifications. For higher education, especially if they're working as a part-time, we need the consent from the employer that they're going to release you uh, to qualify uh, to so that they can release you so that you can attend the lessons. And for higher education also, we need uh, GCSE maths and English, grade A, start to C or four to nine grades. Now we can go to the next one. Uh, what facilities we have got? Unfortunately, we are in the COVID situation. Most of our lessons now face-to-face -face with some remote teaching uh, currently, but we expect hopefully if the government allows fully to go face-to-face. -face. We've got very good modern workshops with lots of facilities. I'm not gonna read all the things, but I will give you a flavor and you will see some pictures. It's about drill machines, lathe, milling machine, band saws, uh, metal cutting machines, CNCs, 3D printing, uh, laser and plasma uh, cutting machines. And in electronics, we have got various test equipment such as multimeter power supplies, oscilloscope, spectrum analyzers, logic analyzers, and we've got new equipment also such as the PLCs and robotic arms uh, and, and renewable energy equipment. And we have range of software across both areas, such as uh, industry standard software from Automation Studio, uh, Autodesk, AutoCAD, we have got SolidWorks, MATLAB, Multisim, LabVIEW, and a lot of other software from Intel uh, and other companies. Uh, so next slide. These are some of the equipment. So we are showing in the first one, student has made the circuit on the right side. The left side, this is basically equipment from SMC uh, to uh, training equipment. And underneath on the right side, we've got oscilloscopes. And at the bottom in the enclosed cage, it's a robot, industrial robot from ABB. So you can learn these skills uh, subsequently in various level of the courses, especially the HE ones, uh, the, the robotics and so on. 
and, and automation and control. So next slide. Now, this is again uh, a big material testing machines, which is in one of the mechanical test material test lab. So you can test various materials, the strengths, the hardness, uh, and if there are any cracks or so on. So you can test it, get the report, analyze the report, and see how good the material is, where you can use it. So it's quite useful uh, from level two up to HE, basically students do use it. Next slide. It's showing various uh, equipment such as, you know, lathe machine on the bottom right, the CNC, uh, sorry, milling machine at the top right. And then at the bottom, we have got a uh, bandsaw. So they are used in different workshops, depending on which one you are using uh, and, the, and the plasma cutter at the top left. So different workshop have got different equipment based on the, the subject you study or the projects you make. So you can be part of different machinery and equipment in different workshops. Uh, and you'll be learning basically with technicians or, or the lecturer, they will teach you uh, depending on the unit and so on different equipment, how to use it and you'll be using it uh, either for a unit or in the project or both. So next slide, Caroline. Uh, our students have secured employee. We can't list all the companies, but literally everywhere, whichever you can think of, whether the company is small or big uh, in the past few years. So we have listed a few, including TFL, uh, BA Ultra Electronics, Hale Hamilton, Thames Water, Crossrail, and so on. Uh, Formula One, Royal Opera House, Audi, Sky, Otis Lift, Air Traffic Control, uh, Crossrail, and National Rail, and so on. So it's a long list of employers, but depends which job you're successful for and where you apply, and so on, and, and for which post. Okay, next one, Caroline. Again, different equipment uh, in another workshop. So at the yellow one is the laser cutter and the blue one you can see it's a plasma cutter equipment. And then we've got CNCs uh, and at the back of the first page, it's a milling machine. Sorry, I have to just wave myself, otherwise it will, light will just go off. <laughs> okay, next slide. Now the level three students where they have gone. So again, we have listed a lot of universities. Uh, Brunel University is our partner for level six programs, especially in electronic and electrical electronic and automation control engineering. We are devising different courses with them now. So hopefully you'll hear more on the website from March onwards, what pathways, exciting pathways for level six top of degree program are coming through. So the students at level three don't just go to Brunel, they go to other universities also uh, throughout the country. For example, Bath, uh, Loughborough, Warwick, Bristol, Exeter, Bradford. So these are the current university, Queen Mary, UCL even. Uh, so we have listed. So it, students get chance to choose their own future uh, based on the advice and guidance and where they want to go. So that's why the students go at different places based on where they prefer to go based on also the grades. Okay. Now the progression from level three. So from level one, you can go to level two and the level two to level three, or you may start at the level three directly if you've got the right grades. But program, progression from level three, the full level three, we call extended diploma in engineering or mechanical electrical electron. You can do HNC, HN at the college. You can directly go to university or go to work or even apprenticeship. We've got a separate presentation, I think with my colleagues in apprenticeship and engineering. So students do go there also. So it's a lot of opportunities, different areas based on what you want to do. So the next slide. So this is one of our students in mechanical engineering. Uh, she's finished the level three a uh, couple of years ago and then she went to Brunel and she's doing quite well. Um, although it's a transition in the first year and normally you settle in the university and so on. So women in engineering and she's just one example we've got lots of students uh, from dif different ethnicity and backgrounds, male, female, uh, disabled, dyslexic, all sort of streams. So we welcome the students. We want to help them and make sure they choose the right thing and they are successful in the program and progress to the next level. So these are the comments she has put. So you can read it uh, about the facilities and equipment and, and teachers, basically uh, the knowledge you get and the skills you develop. Okay, the next slide. And we've got staff from different industry background and experience. Uh, some also with a lot of teaching experience as well, both in HE and higher education, also the vocational courses. So we've got a variety of staff with 
different skills and experience for lower levels and higher levels and they will share their experience and the knowledge and skills they have uh, including very experienced technicians uh, in different labs so they also assist you uh, in the lab work and workshops and we've got a lot of workshops actually we've got uh, in non-iot block we have got eight workshops four on electronics electrical and four on mechanical and in the iot higher education we have got six additional workshops for project um, uh, power uh, robotics control engineering uh, automation and control that is electronics labs and some practical labs and mechanical labs as well so we're very good facilities covering a whole range of electrical electronic and mechanical engineering disciplines uh, from programming really basic to really high-tech uh, job-oriented market and we teach uh, all sorts of things and as I said it is career focused so so talk to us uh, when you apply you'll be if you submit an application basically so you will be getting call uh, from one of the colleagues who will be looking at your application and discuss the opportunity what you are looking for uh, in future and what is the right course for you and based on that they will give you offer so based on your career aspirations uh, you will get the advice and in, in part of the program you'll also get chance to do work experience nowadays a lot of virtual work experience but you can do also real work experience and we work with employers they design the curriculum with us so it is really industry focused and we have got very successful programs across all the levels so i think that's it isn't it uh, if you have got any questions you can post in the chat we rushed through because of the time constraint but if you want to me to explain so thank you Mirif. and um, we hope you find this session useful and we do have one question so far so hani has put if i do engineering how long is this is the course Okay, uh, it depends on the grades. Uh, so if you have got grades four to nine, for example, and you come on the level three. So level three is like A levels, uh, two A levels. So it's over two years full time. Uh, but if you, let's say, don't have a grade or somebody doesn't have the right grades, then level one with grade E is, is the one year. Level two with grade D is four Ds is one year. So level one is one year, level two is one year, and level three is two, two years. So if you've got the right grades, you don't have to start at level two or level one. You can straight away after GCSE start at level three, or if you've got level three qualification with A-levels or uh, engineering discipline or related discipline, uh, including physics or maths, for example, then you can start HNC, which is one year full-time. HND, so it's like a first year of degree program HNC. The HND is second year of degree program, it's a standalone qualification. Both are individually one year each. And then if you want to go to the top of degree, normally that is one year. So you'll get a full degree in three years actually, but getting multiple qualifications. So if you, or even we have got courses, especially HE courses are available part-time, including level three are available part-time. So if somebody is working, adults, we've got the courses for them as well uh, in, in all disciplines, including slowly doing it uh, over multiple years. So part-time courses are double the length normally. So for example, HNC part-time, HNC full-time is one year, but HNC part-time will be two years. Okay, great. Caroline, um, uh, we have oh. another question. Yep. Yeah. yeah, sure. Uh, there's an, one, one, uh, one question, with, uh, actually she's asked several questions. Person. Uh, is there a work experience for a level three course and yes. So, how many hours of work experience does the student have to complete? She's got uh, a couple of other questions. Uh, do you want to answer one by one, Maruf? Uh, yes, I will answer this first. So, it makes basically separate answer then. Work experience does vary depending on the employers, the companies, how much time they are willing to offer. Uh, so, typically, it could be uh, we have got extended work experience, which we call industrial placement. They can be up to 45 working days, but you may not get it unless you are on future T-level course. So typical work experience could be from two days to five days, could be two full days to two full five days, or it's scattered over depending on how the employers uh, design their work experience program. So it depends on the employer. So typically 20 hours will be good enough or 15 hours, even in some cases, students have done. So it's uh, agreed negotiation agreement between the between ourselves and the employers and the learners 
uh, it's the availability of the employers and when they arrange it basically for our cohort of students. Thank you, Maru. Uh, the next question to her is, uh, are there any exams on a level three course? And yes. So, what is the percentage ratio between coursework and exams? Okay, in level three, because we didn't go through the unit uh, because of the short time. So in level three, if you do the full level three, it's 15 units. So three units out of 15 have got exam uh, and each of the exam unit uh, is a double unit. So and other 12 units are single unit sort of. So the, so it's a double grading for that in a, in a way. Uh, so three units, the way we do it, we do the first two, first, the two units in the first year and the third unit we do in the second year. So engineering principles and the design unit is done in the first year uh, normally because that has got mechanical electronic principles and the design concepts, bit of CAD and so on. And the exams are typically two hours and the other one is extended exam done over four days, about four hour, eight hours exam. And the third exam, which is microcontroller, which we do in the second year, which is about a 15 to 20 hour exam, but you get the full details about that. So yes, it, these exam units are double units and they are scattered and you are taught everything. Uh, and then you go for the exam basically and you get a recent chance as well. Um, can I study a level three course with GCSE or do I have to study a level two course first? Yes, I mean, our requirement is to have maths and English and science uh, typically for, for level three. So if you are doing both maths and, uh, maths and English especially, and if you're coming from school, the more suitable course on uh, retaking GCSE, more suitable course could be level two uh, if you've got grade uh, Ds or grade fours. Uh, so we'll look at your application. So what you do is you based on your prediction now, you can apply and whatever is the best course based on your achievement in August, we will offer that. So you can start applying and you'll be interviewed based on what you, your prediction is. But be ready, we do change the learners from lower to higher or higher to lower based on what they achieve. The student is turning 18 in, in September 2021. Do they have to pay for the course fee? No, no. The, the first level three is free. So you don't have to pay for the course fee, no. So now most likely if you decide to do a two-year course, so you'll get a full qualification in two years, but then then you'll, you'll avoid paying the fee in the second year. So you'll go for the two-year program, provided you are happy to stay on a two-year course. Normally, if you choose being 18 and you turn 19 on 31st of August, the following year, then they treat as two separate qualifications. So, but we work with you individually and then try to put you on a two-year program if you are happy and then get qualification at the end of two years. Uh, so you don't have to pay even in the second year. Thank you, Marif. Caroline, do you have any questions on your end? Um, Hani has put, how long do I have to apply? But you, well, you'll have till, I think it's about, September? Is yeah, I mean, the wrong? courses are starting on September. So earlier, the better you apply. Yeah. Uh, students start applying from October onwards, but you can even apply now. And typically in two to three weeks, uh, apart from the break time, obviously, Easter vacation, you will be getting a call. You can even, in fact, select your interview day as well and the time, uh, or the, it will show you online which slots are available and so on. Yeah, and I apply. Yeah, apply I put the, the how to apply link on in the chat, so you should be able to to access that and get more information on how to apply as well. Okay, so I think that's all we have time for in terms of questions. And um, we hope this you found this session useful, and um, you can view the Welcome to Uxbridge College session on our website, and we'll send you a link to that and the, this recording in the next few days. Please check out our other curriculum sessions that we're running. If you're interested in our new T levels, apprenticeships, or higher education for our West London Institute of Technology, you can join our live sessions on the 30th of March. Um, but that's all today, and we look forward to welcoming you to uh, Uxbridge College. So thank you for, for attending. And um, yeah, I think that's it. We'll, we'll see you all later, hopefully. Thank okay. you all for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.